subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel so what is up guys nick here helping you to master your technology p20 pro two months later this the last time i've done a video on this was about two months ago but today we're going to cover the triple lens beast here in the p20 pro and uh you know i just want to discuss what it's been like to use this and if this phone is still worth it you know more people have become aware of huawei as they're reaching over a hundred million sales in their devices just on july 18th they crossed that and their goal is 200 million this year so they're approaching apple territory when it comes to sales and smartphones yes that's combined but at the same time huawei is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to these smartphones these days and uh, this one the only reason i'm covering is because it's been really a great experience let's begin with the body and the build now my experience with the body and the build of this phone by the way if you're wondering this is just a naked wrap skin i put around like as a bumper and then i put one over the camera lens because i scratched that thing up a little bit uh by dropping it so the huawei p20 pro to me has been an ergonomic dream so far uh, the galaxy s9 plus is one of its closest competitors Editors, but you can just tell that it's a more compact body with a larger screen so holding this phone in the hand and one handing this device has been really a good experience for the Huawei P20 Pro now in terms of its design it does take some elements from you could say the iPhone 10 or the essential phone with the notch it does have the notch over here the notch is much smaller though and it can be hidden here for the P20 Pro now a lot of people say that chin is just absolutely ugly for this device but at the same time there's no waste space when you are using applications here like on the iPhone 10 where the keyboard has a huge wasted space the chin actually serves somewhat of a purpose you also have a very fast and efficient fingerprint scanner on here that's probably the fastest I've ever seen on a smartphone it's not only fast it does some neat tricks as well but further discussing the design the back has been a little bit slippery but you know same like other phones I don't like the fact that it gets all these fingerprints on the back it still does that and um, it has a little bit of a camera hump that does make it rock on the table just like the iPhone 10 so that's a negative for this phone as well especially up in this corner if you hit it there so other than that the design has been compact and very nice almost dropped it very nice for a very large screen because it just has a you know a more narrow body and just like a, a shorter feel than some of the other you know competitors that it's going up against like i say like the galaxy s8 plus the s9 plus the note 8 these phones just don't feel as compact with such a large screen like the p20 pro so that's my take on design after two months and in terms of the build quality it's held up okay i think the camera lens like i said that's why i have a little you know sticker on here or a little um skin uh, scratched a little bit too easily but it does hold up about similar to a galaxy phone or an iphone so no issue issues too much when it comes to the build the display though let's get on to the display now the display to me like I mentioned in prior videos is kind of calibrated similar to an iPhone display it's 1080p at its highest resolution and this is not quite the top resolution you could get you can get higher on a Samsung phone for example but it still looks very good and I believe if I'm not mistaken this phone was made or uh, this display was made by Samsung but you can see that uh, over here in color eye comfort let's go here you do have a natural tone mode which basically is like true tone for the iPhone and you could change the color temperature to your perfect liking here with a little color wheel so it does have quite a bit of you know customization when it comes to that display on the whole though the notch hasn't really gotten in the way too much but Huawei is pretty forgiving as you can go ahead and go into display go into notch and you can remove that notch if you don't like it but it's a pretty small notch so it doesn't really get in the way too much viewing angles are good and YouTube when you're watching YouTube videos it doesn't cut off you know any of the YouTube video with the notch or when you're reading you don't get no cutoffs there as well so flat display no curve so if you like a flatter display you're gonna love the p20 pros and uh, overall I've enjoyed it it's a pretty well calibrated display and it's, it's OLED so it has nice rich colors it's probably not the sharpest that's all you got to wonder about there if you want to tack sharp like 2k 4k any any type of display like that 
it's 1080p, so just keep that in mind, but that does help the battery life. Okay, so discussing the software, we're talking about EMUI 8.1 here. If we go to system and I go to system update, you can see EMUI 8.1.0, so that's Android 8.1.0. EMUI is actually a little bit, you know, less in your face than prior versions. This is the best version of the software ever. And they got quite a few features, like you can do gestures here. If you go into system navigation, you have different options for gestures. You also have the ability to theme this display out by going into the battery going to battery and you have darkened interface colors here there is a lot of other things going on in accessibility down here like one-handed ui you can shift the screen down so there is quite a few enhancements that you're not going to see in like a stock android device you also have motion control split screen gestures so with that software and all those features how is the performance and i can gladly say it's been great the kirin 970 ai chip in here and mostly the six gigs of ram is i think what helped this phone perform extremely well now i I do have the developer options on and I do have animations down so you can see it's going to look a little quicker here but on the whole this phone pretty much flies through everything you can do it's a proper flagship when it comes to speed now I know they didn't come with like a later newer processor but Huawei's processor release cycle is not the same as a Snapdragon or Apple so you should be seeing a new processor for Huawei on their next flagship phone uh, other than the p20 pro maybe the mate 20 pro will get this new processor but this one still runs fantastic and i think the addition of six gigs of ram is what helped it to continue to have pretty good performance uh the lag there is really no lag the only thing i've seen a couple times is the phone kind of just spazzed out for a minute or two on a few apps but other than that it's been great and it, uh, it has been getting a few security updates and huawei's been pushing out some software updates rather quickly for this phone not major ones but i've been seeing updates coming at least two or three times and i've only had the phone a couple months so signs are looking good for huawei supporting this phone but we'll see how it goes in the longer term okay so after two months what are my thoughts on the p20 pro's triple camera setup well let's get into the camera and take a quick photo of maybe the iphone 10 here Number one, this phone has very fast focus and very fast shutter speed. So you're not gonna miss any moments on the P20 Pro, that's a guarantee. Also, you're not gonna miss any low light shots because the night mode over here on the P20 Pro is phenomenal it can really pull in the details when it's really dark out so if you're really into low light photography you're gonna love the p20 pro now also you do have portrait mode and video mode here and you have more modes over here tons of modes not all of them work fantastic for example the video doesn't work great on this phone due to no ois in 4k but 1080p video looks stellar we do have panoramic modes monochrome monochrome is this third sensor here and uh, i don't think this sensor is necessary i feel like they should have put a wide angle that didn't focus i think we should have put a wide angle on the p20 pro instead of a monochrome but hey it does the trick if you're into bmw black and white photos it'll do the trick there but going over here you can see you do have 3d panorama document scan good food and a lot of these modes just make this camera really versatile in the day to day and the front facing camera has a 24 megapixel sensor and to me it's just a little too soft it kind of makes your face look like you're always on beauty mode with the p20 pro here but i'm not going to talk too much more about it the hybrid zoom has been fantastic as well going up to 5x best zoom i've seen on a smartphone it does get a little bit shaky at the 5x but you can still get some incredible detail at that 5x zoom so if you're looking for one of the best photography phones this is probably up there in the best if not the best but video not so much as the best video you do have some filters up here some motion photos which is kind of like live photos on the iphone and no expandable storage for these photos but you do get at least 128 gigs here for the p20 pro take a look at these samples both front and rear to decide if this is going to be you know the camera setup that you want to go with in your next smartphone <laughs>
So talking about battery really quickly, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, the same size is coming in the Note 9, but the Huawei P20 Pro has been fantastic on battery. There's not much to talk about here because it's just it just works. You get through about two days if you're a light to moderate user. If you're a very heavy user, I think you can still get it pretty close to drained if you're a super heavy user by the end of the day but you're never going to be like the phone shutting off on you. That just is not going to happen on the P20 Pro. So it is a champ in the battery department. You also have power saving modes, ultra power saving modes. You could drop that screen resolution to get even better battery life on this device. And the supercharger that charges through this USB-C port is the fastest I've seen on any smartphone. So if you're looking for very fast charging, supercharger on the Huawei devices is incredible. So keep that in mind. That's my take on the battery life you can see it only dropped like a measly three percent throughout this entire video and uh once it gets at 90 and below it, it gets even slower and slower to go down so really good battery life here for the p20 pro so moving on to the audio quality with the p20 pro it's got very rich sound it has a variable aperture so it changes apertures in different lightings to get great low light six gigs of ram and an exynos if we go ahead and go down into the notifications tray you can see that we also have dolby atmos on this phone to make it even louder but going ahead and putting this sideways 98, 10 if you are in other region this one is the snapdragon 845. you can see it does have a not as loud of a speaker over here at the top but it does have one So the one at the bottom is definitely more powerful and potent, but you're really going to enjoy listening to podcasts, videos, and music through these external speakers. They get loud, but they don't distort or get tinny. So good audio experience here for the P20 Pro. Okay, guys, so we've arrived at the final conclusion of this video. After two months, the Huawei P20 Pro... It's been like an iPhone 10 like Android experience, but you get the flexibility that Android has to offer with theming, changing, you know, more options out on this phone. Uh, it doesn't have an app drawer, but you can put it in the settings. You can put in an app drawer if you would like. So overall, though, very stable experience. Surprisingly, you know, considering that EMUI hasn't been the most stable software before. This is the best version of it yet. Very quick. Uh, it's not the cleanest software. Definitely not my favorite when it comes to just its overall all looks but the other things it offers are just incredible like the amazing cameras on the rear the compact form factor the ergonomics of this phone is what really has sold me on this device and uh, the fact that it has a very fast face unlock and fingerprint scanner are nice additions to this phone i don't like the fact that it rocks on the table i don't like the fact that it gets you know fingerprints all over the place and i don't think it has the best design i think that the chin could go away and make this an all-screen phone that would be an even better design and uh this huawei logo right here didn't have to be there in my opinion but it's there but other than that it's definitely giving apple and samsung a run for their money first one of the best flagships it is very unique it just feels different from using your typical apple samsung and google experience so if you're tired of those type of devices or use those and you want something different but you want something that's at that level if not better in multiple areas the p20 pro will suffice and that's my experience two months later with the p20 pro not a perfect phone but a really good offering from huawei this year and definitely a true flagship so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, be sure to drop them down below related to the P20 Pro. I will try to get back to as many as possible. And if I don't, many in the community will. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, enjoyable, click that like button for